defense. Here's another look from a different angle. It was that left hook, that same sweet punch, that honey punch that knocked. Fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black with gold, weighing in at 133 and three quarter pounds. He holds a perfect professional record of 23 wins with 20 wins by way of knockout and no losses. From Toowoomba, Australia, he is the first defending WBO interim lightweight champion of the world, Michael Cassidy. And now introducing his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with silver, weighing in at 134 and one quarter pounds. Holding a professional record of 35 wins, including 21 wins by way of knockout, with three losses and one draw. From Guantanamo, Cuba, he is the current defending Ring Magazine lightweight champion of the world, Joel my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. We've documented that. Good luck, Cannon down. Bell's got CDs. His legs look a little bit uh, shaky still. Maybe yeah. from that shot once he was on the ground. Well, it looked more like a flash knockdown. Stop! Knockdown, something you unex unexpected. He walked right into that left hand from Casamayor. Well, something we hadn't mentioned. Cut oh. it down. Those cut CDs again. And let me tell you, that was right on the chin. I don't know if he's going to be able to recover from this one. There is no three knockdown rule. Got CDs has been down twice here in the first minute. It, it, it's the southpaw stance that's giving him trouble right now. He can't see that straight left hand coming for whatever reason. That's why it's always important to spar against left hook in a certain way. But if you slip in that same way, you, you're slipping yourself into a southpaw's left. And I know Casillas was, a, you know, he was prepared for this for this fight. He's looking forward. Here he's the main event. Hang on that experience. I like I was going to ask you how to see if Casillas can. And here we see Casillas running in and getting caught with a good left hook. Same again, same punch. Now, well, here's the second knockdown, Lennox, again, a left hand. He ducks the same way a southpaw throws his left hand. Down and hurt in fights. And this is why Katsidis is compared to Gotti. There's a left southpaw because you don't see too much of them. Cassidy's is coming to him, so Samayor is more relaxed and fluent with his cards already. He can tie up Katsidi's anytime he feels threatened. Katsidi's threw a right, Casimir. Katsidi's is saying he doesn't want to show Casimir no sight as well, a 12 round decision victory. Throwing the jab yet, in order to get in, he's trying to get in, but he got to throw the jab. He drawing brawling kind of fight. I don't know if ugly is the right word, but not a very technical fight at any rate. He thought that was in his... Is that in his best interest here, Lennox? He seems to be brawling with him a bit. Well, you know, this is his style of fight, and uh, it's not a pretty style, but, you know, only on certain fighters is it, it can be effective. Against a slick guy like Casimir, it's, it's, it's difficult to be effective because, you know... Yeah, he was able to get Amistad turn into what he wanted to because Amistad a lot of level. Good luck. Some effective punches, but to this point, Mac. A point well taken. That's more blocking most of that. Be it. A little grooming advice for Casamayor. In fuzzing at least as much as Casamayor, who did hit Katsidis when he was down in the first round. Right on the inside by Katsidis. Like for a veteran like Casamayor, as Casamayor shoots the left to the body, Katsidis comes back. Casamayor a little low with that left hand. 
There's a combination that staggers Casamayor. Casamayor is hurt. A two-punch combination, right hand from Katsidis. Right to the chin. Right hand again by Katsidis. Plenty of time to go in the round. Right hand to the chest by Katsidis. They exchange crosses. Casamayor is in some trouble with one minute to go. Stop! Stop! And yet Casamayor is also throwing some dangerous shots here. Let him go, let him go. Casamayor trying to tie up Katsidis. Right hand by Katsidis. Casamayor shoots a left, shoots a left again. Tremendous action here in the fourth. Uh, well, Casey Mara is really right. letting it hang loose. He's a bit, he's a bit weary right now, a bit tired. He's doing the right thing. As Cassidy's is coming in, he's throwing a combination, then holding him, or then tying him up. Watch it for a low blow. And you can see why the comparisons are made to Arturo Gatti. Well, dropped twice early in the first round. Stop. Casamayor, late punch there. And you see Casides hurting Casamayor with a right hand, then a hook, and then a right hand. Casamayor is a bit hurt right there. There's that right hand, left hook. Casamayor did see punch, the punch that's always been working for him, which is that left hand. Is it a fight? You punches get a bit wider as you get a little. Wasn't working. Katsidis is pure brawl. Katsidis right at defense is part. Casimiro's money punches that left hook. And while the outcome is still very much in doubt, in terms of what's who's going to actually win this fight, low blow. Low blow to my retaliation. left hand on the inside by Katsidis to the body. Break hurt him the last time because he kept he dropped his hands and allowed Casidis to throw. We begin round number six. In the last round, Casamayor threw only 42 punches, according to Copybox, his lowest punch output so far in the fight. And you see, even when Casamayor <laughs> going into this fight, I, I didn't want to say it. Else here. He's fighting for the lightweight championship here, Katsidis. The Mayor, it's Michael Katsidis. Left hand on the inside. Right. The sanctioning bodies have no real legitimate authority to call anyone champion. Um, they've squandered whatever legitimacy they've had. Mayor got hurt again. Ten. Gets in the ten. ring within the 10 second framework. Katsidis jumps right back on him. Left hand by Katsidis. Shoots a right hand to the head. Casamayor trying to back away. Katsidis trying to land the home run. He's going to run out of time. Late shot there by Katsidis. Look at the knockdown. And here it is. Right to the body. It's a left to the body. Then a left hook. Knocked him off balance. And then a broad of punches. It was the body shot. It, it was, was the body, body shot, shot that, that really, collapsed Yeah, him. that really opened it up. Like I said, Casimir doesn't like that body shot. That, that crippled him for a second. As you can see, he bends down low and he's waving in with his head. And it's, he got knocked off balance, still suffering from that body shot. Winning streak, he's won the last four rounds in a row with that body punching. One quick thing, if he got through the ropes... He needs to be, he needs to move, move and throw punches. Oh, beats a right hand. Fires back with this. Giving you some unrelentless power. He's just, he's just on you every second, he's not letting up. Yeah, I... I... 
Once in a while, a guy comes along, career to disqualify himself from that category. Stockies has not yet eliminated himself from Good that possibility, there. and he is carrying this fight since the early level of pressure Katsidis is exerting is really debilitating. Asamayo yeah. holds on at the end of the seventh. Those body shots, so he's, he's trying to work to the body. Illustrate that point. Pretty point. Damn. And again, what's on? Asamayor is the man who beat the man. Though Nate Campbell's upset win over Juan Diaz a couple weeks ago makes him and many in, in boxing history, the title's been passed usually in a lineal way, meaning from one guy to the next guy who beats him. Only in modern boxing history, especially, has just kind of runs right back at him. Those two rounds, Castamaro was in. It was 18 to 7 and connects. Left hand by Pitts the distance. I thought he should have gave him a warning first. You gotta give a guy a warning. But a fighter like Casamayor, if he's gonna hit you low intentionally, F. And so I, I find it hard to believe it was intentional. But well, what he did low with the far hand. And I wouldn't really call that a hit, I would call it a tap. He got tapped low. That wasn't a tap on Cassidy's jaw right there. Good left hand by Casamayor. Cassidy steps in with a combination. Gave some of what uh, Cassidy was able to do successfully. Well, you know. Casamayor's managed to in the last several rounds of right hand from Katsidis. Not that Casamayor's necessarily won these rounds, but his situation doesn't seem as desperate as it did three or four rounds ago. Casamayor has found that left hand again, been able to find the mark. And, the and let's take a look at that low blow. It's, it, you know, it just seemed like Casimiro's head was really low. He didn't pick up his head before he threw the uppercut, and he was just too low for that uppercut. Well, the low blow, Casimiro loses a point, which, when you talk about some swing rounds, that could be a huge factor in this fight. Yeah, given the stakes, it seems an unnecessary... Oh! has oh! got caught! Well, let me tell you, he got caught coming if in. He can, he shot. get his legs back in the next few seconds, guys. That's what this fighter's... Referee's giving him a lot of oh, time. Oh, he's thinking about this. Can't got... get CDs, get his legs back. He got dropped twice in the first, then here, and he's trying to get it and stop. John Shirley steps in and stops it. What a shocking turn of events when it looked by the fourth or fifth round that Katsidis was beating the fight out of Casamayor. That the script was being written, the young new fighter on the scene was going to emerge as lightweight champion for the old lion to pull off that kind of knockout and let me was tell you, incredible. Katsidis helped himself get knocked out. He ran into a shot and ran onto Casamayor's Left hand and got knocked out that way. And Lennox, that's what he did in rounds one and two, and he avoided that mistake, but he made that mistake in round ten. You know, he was eager. He's like an over-eager beaver, and this type of over-eager beaver gets you in trouble. He you told us patience would be the key, but he lost his patience. Right. You cannot run in with your hands down. Guys, by the fourth or fifth round, I'm sorry, Katsidis, to me, had all the look of a fighter of destiny that he was destined to overcome these early obstacles and go on and win the way he was hurting Casamayor. But... Let's take a look. Here it is. He comes running in. Here he comes. Boom! He gets caught right on the jaw. I didn't even see that punch coming. He was focused more on landing his own punches than, to, to, than concentrating on defense. Here's another look from a different angle. It was that left hook, that same sweet punch, that honey punch that knocked down Casitas in the first couple rounds. And this is where the referee really had to step in and stop the fight. There's a good short right hand in there by Casamayo right on the chin. I don't know about that stoppage, guys. I don't think it was a bad stoppage. I, I wouldn't second guess the referee and say it was bad, but 
Max. I'm not sure yeah. that he was unable to continue. But Max, you know, looking at the face as you get a fist bump from Casimiro. Look I never, what do you do when a fighter gives you his glove? I guess you gotta give him a, you gotta give him your hand, right? You can't, you can't leave him hanging. But you looking, can't leave him hanging. Looking at the face of Katsidis after the fight was stopped. Yeah. He looked hurt. Yes, he did. He looked hurt, so I cannot disagree with John Shirley. I, I, do not, I would not criticize the referee. It's, there's a difference between saying, if I were the ref, I may not have stopped that, and saying that the ref had a bad stoppage. That was not a bad stoppage. It's a judgment call. But if you were the, if you were the judge or ref, would you stop it? I would not have, but maybe I would, I would be wrong. I would have stopped it. I think okay, it was, I, I think, I think many it. people would have. All right, official time of the stoppage. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee John Shirley has called a stop to this contest at 30 seconds of round number 10. Declaring the winner by knockout, and now the new WBO Interim Lightweight Champion of the World.